I've got the Sevillian craft beer and they've got the, the Cadiz craft beer. Yeah, the IPA. Nice so spot. cheers to Cadiz. And now we're in Sevilla. Venga. Let's give it a go. Ooh, ooh, very strong. <laughs> that's a, that's oh, a great, nice hey, IPA. It's very hot here. Uh, you know, people are sweating, but you know, it's like it's a nice, like, bustling area. Great, and, uh, everything. And you get to hydrate yourself with beer and gazpacho. Yeah, get, it's bloody hot. It's like the house of the devil. It's, 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 <laughs> it's like hell kind Dante's of. Inferno. Yeah. Hell's yeah. Kitchen. Call it what you want. Only these crazy people stay out in the day like this. This is La Casa de Diab. Siento que el clima crea cómo se van las personas y y ayuda a formarse una ciudad, entonces creo que esta ciudad es lo que es también por parte de su clima. Como no vivo aquí, no estoy loca, por los momentos sí. lo llevo bien. We're lucky enough to live in Malaga where it does get really, really hot, but it's just slightly cooler and you got that nice Mediterranean breeze. But we've also suffered through a Madrid summer. We've lived in Madrid for the summer. That is also brutal. Not quite as brutal as Sevilla. Sevilla and Cordoba are basically like the two hottest cities in Europe, if we're being quite honest. It's always fun to experience something different. And now my Irish buddy that we're going to meet later comes from Southeast Ireland, where, you know, right now it's probably 18 degrees Celsius. I'm actually really curious to see what my buddy Colin thinks of this heat. No, that just going to Being from South. Southeast Ireland. You're gonna die for this heat, man. Emeka, so what do you got here? The secret sauce? Yeah, I got the secret sauce. Orange wine. Orange wine. Yeah. That's, a, that's actually pretty amazing. It's actually uh, very fitting because Sevilla has a lot of orange production. Ooh. If you like sweet, tangy wine, wow, and it's freezing. We had it in the freezer. Just look at the yeah, bottle, it's melting. Okay. It's, it's like all the condensation on the bottle. Oh, wow, that is yeah, beautiful. Look at that. We're gonna have to put that bottle down tonight with the help of yeah. our Irish buddy. ¿Qué piensas? Vino de naranja. Oh, beach. Vino yeah. de naranja, muy bueno. Yeah, no, muy bueno. Very good. Very good, very good. Oh, wait, so you're like a real, actual Irishman. 100%. Yes. Wow, so look at this Irish beard. It's like wow. gin ginger gold. Are you, are you, are you like guarding like me like a charm? Colin, Colin, yeah, nice to meet you, man. You have, to, you have a crazy oh, beard. Yeah, yeah, scroll. Hey, people. Cork, yeah, Cork. Yeah, Cork. Cork. Oh, it's open. Oh, even yeah, Cork. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what's beautiful? What? And the beer. Oh, right. Alejandro Verde. Oh, nice. Get his stuff a cruise campo. Cruise, cruise campo, hey, cruise campo. You don't like it? No, it's no, garbage, it's all dude. Right. No, it's all right. I told you guys, no one likes Cruz Campo. Yeah. <laughs> the Irishman has been staying sober. I commend him. He's yeah. running a business. He's working hard. You know, that Irish work ethic and that American work ethic is something we got in common. But you got to remember, we're in Spain, mate. So it's the drink ethic. <laughs> this would be my, my average choice. Now. Yeah? Some American guy. <laughs> cool. <Loving> cool. <laughs> He's a big man. He'll protect you. There you go. Whoa. Hey. Hey, Biggie Smalls, I found you guys' uh, limo. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Famous mobile, all right? Well, I get famous. It's the Irish yeah. man's protecting the Americans. No, no literally, me and, me and Colin have been having a great time together, actually. That's like, what it's yeah. all about. I'm only friends with people that have great times. No, no, no Colin's cool as fuck, man. Like, I, I like this guy. Colin's yeah. the bee's knees. All right, let's 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 see if the myth is true. Or what, what? Or if it's not a myth. Cruz oh. Campo, cold Cruz I Campo. Mean, I all right, right? it's pretty good. Too. I've been hearing for years that Cruz Campo is garbage, and I concurred for the longest yeah. time. You know, when you get it at Cien Montaritos or the grocery store, but it, right here from this tap in this random bar, it's very, very cold, yeah. and I want to see if it's good. So let's say has it. This is muy garbaggio. Ooh, and it's ice cold. Yeah, it is so, good. So actually, it is good. It's actually pretty good. In Sevilla. But yeah, in Sevilla. In Only Sevilla. in Sevilla. Yeah. Man, this city just has a different vibe. Yeah. Much bigger. The historic center is mass. The neighborhoods on the outskirts are also just big. Plenty of things to see. It has such a tropical vibe here in the summer. It really feels like a slice of the Americas. And that's because as we see here next to the river, when we get to the river, we'll see where the capital of the Spanish empire was here. Now, obviously not the capital capital. The capital was always in Madrid and before that Toledo. However, all the money ran through here and so you'll see these huge tropical gardens, beautiful castles, the citadel, the huge mass cathedral, tower of gold, just so much history all around you. And of course that beautiful Spanish sun. Well, we've made it to the banks of the Guadalquivir River, perhaps the most emblematic river in all of Spain. A river that has essentially formed the country, at least for centuries during the peak of the Spanish Empire. And that's because the river reached the Atlantic Ocean. And this was a navigable river. It was deep enough to bring the ships up here. And that's why they decided to make this the de facto capital, right? Where all the money came from, the gold, the silver, all the goods from the Americas, the Colombian exchange, 
centuries of history connecting the Americas to Spain came right through here and Sevilla was one of the richest cities in all of Spain. If you think of quintessential Spain, if you think of the heart, the soul, the vibe of Spain, you think of Sevilla. The river is sort of an anomaly, right? Because here in Spain, especially in southern Spain, it's so dry, yet this river was deep enough, as I mentioned, to allow ships like this to navigate up here that came from thousands of miles across the ocean, the Caribbean. Heck, they went down and all the way around Patagonia, Peru, because this was before the Panama Canal. These ships right here, these caravels, impressive ships that actually the Portuguese invented first because the Portuguese were busy sailing around the west coast of Africa, trying to reach the east that way. Of course, Columbus boldly said, hey, let's go west. He didn't actually know what was beyond there. He pretended to know. And of course, the rest is history. How's the gastronomy tour going? We got some calamaris here, courtesy of Colin. This gastronomy tour is going great. Really putting limon over your food and really like that secret thing that elevates your flavor. Like it takes it from like zero to a hundred real quick, right? Actually, Colin was telling me he found this on Spain Revealed's channel. So shout out to James Blick also, and his lady. Colin looks like a, like a head chef. He, he, he has that look, you know? With a beard like this, we'll yeah, 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 So we've ran into the classic problem. On a Saturday night in Spain, you can't find a table. Because this is the lifestyle here. All right, we're going to find a table. Sardinas? Madre mia. Since we're in Sevilla, and I've been talking about the connection to the America as well, I mentioned the Colombian exchange earlier. And did you guys know that tomatoes aren't native to Spain? Neither are potatoes. So. You think, what the heck would Spain be without tomatoes in their culture and their gastronomy? The tomatoes, of course, grow perfectly in this Mediterranean climate and they're absolutely delicious. You got the tomatoes, you got the gazpacho, the samorejo, you got the sandwiches from this nice server here. They're better in the Iberian Peninsula for sure. For a regular tomato, it's actually very tasty. Like normally tomatoes in America are kind of like whatever, but this is pretty good. And if there's one thing that's changed in my diet over the last few years, is that I've came to just love tomatoes. I consume tomatoes in one form or another almost every single day. Whether it's a liter of gazpacho, whether it's tomatoes in a salad, whether it's some sort of um, sauce with pasta, I love tomatoes. Growing up, I didn't like tomatoes, really. I never craved tomatoes, but now I crave tomatoes. Whoa, muy bien. Yeah. You see the difference between mm -hmm. okay, Elliot and me? All right, so this is uh, more pork with um, pepper sauce. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So am I. So we have something in common. Yeah. I am 24 years old. Wow. Que luces jovencita. No, te ves bien, dice. No, like, okay, look, 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 look. Like, look. Okay, I'm See, so like, yeah, we, we also, yes. Yeah. So, you know, I was, yeah, you, you caught my attention. Yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, for sure. Your English, it is very perfect. Well, because I'm soy Americano. Americano? Yeah. Are you Seviana? Seviana? Si. Sí. Ah, muy bien. Elliot. Elliot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you. Wow. Yeah, me amo. Nice me amo Emeka. 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 Yeah. Emeka. Uh, do you, do you want to add me on Instagram? Okay. Emeka, you, you just got a new girlfriend. Yeah, I did. A true Sevian girlfriend. Yes, I got a true Sevian girlfriend. We have the coolest height difference of all time. Buenas noches. Gracias. Lista grande para ti. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, gracias. You're very, very good. Well, I ate my vegetables and I, 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 I have good genes. Comió los sus verduras y tiene buena genética. Oh, esa me falta a mí, como me Yeah, so you know, you know, you know, you know, play basketball. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. <laughs> You're very, very strong. Sí, yeah. he's oh, strong yeah, man. So strong <laughs> man. Okay. Yeah, here, look. Te gusta? No. Fuerte. Yeah, fuerte. Fuerte, me, me fuerte. Fuerte. Me fuerte, yeah. Si. Sí. Alright you guys, this is the party scene in Sevilla. What up? De donde eres? Hi. Where are you, where are you from? Dominican Republic. Eres Dominicana, que lo que loco. Que lo que es. Esto se siente tropicalísimo, no? Aquí. Rico, rico, me encanta, yo soy gringo. Hot, hot. Hot, calientito como tu. Yes. Dale pues. Dame acá va. Oh. It's part of me. This is a Long, a long Island. Dude, in America, I would never get a Long Island for that. For 750. Spain is uh, like a 
baby. Like, like W country. Like winning. They're winning here, all right? Le gusta mucho España, pues. Yeah, yeah, no. All right. Terry's waiting for us. You know, Vim is not banana in the whole time. Morning guys, from day two in Sevilla. Last night was another doozy. Now I want to mention here in Sevilla, this is a city of grandiosity and superlatives. And behind us, we have the world's largest Gothic cathedral. Right here in Sevilla, one of three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The other being the Alcazar and the Archive of the Indios. Man, I love this city so what we didn't see yesterday we're gonna go and explore a little bit I mean just look at the tourists they're everywhere they're watching me as I speak getting a free tour themselves <laughs> so let's go around and uh, check Sevilla out a little more I've gotten a lot of hate comments with people saying stop promoting Spain because the mass tourism is gonna come but it's already been here for the last 30 40 50 years there's no lack of infrastructure for tourists and as we can see here in Sevilla one of the most visited cities in Spain the fourth largest city in Spain behind Madrid Barcelona and Valencia and yeah, like I said, everything about this city is just grandiose. Whether it's the river, the Guadalquivir River, the neighborhoods, the population, the amount of places to eat, it is just absolutely massive. And now the second of the three UNESCO World Heritage Sites is right here, the Real Alcazar, which is a mixture of Moorish and modern Spanish architecture, as they call Murejar. And it is absolutely insane. In fact, this city has been home to a lot of filming locations and famous films such as Star Wars Episode 2, Game of Thrones, and The Prince of Arabia. I mean, just look at it. Like, it's a perfect setting for filming movies. I can see why Hollywood would want to come here to film a movie. Now, while the historic center is, of course, very famous in Sevilla, the three UNESCO World Heritage Sites, this right here is perhaps the most emblematic and photogenic place in the whole city. We're here in the Plaza de España, a place that's actually relatively new. In fact, it was refurbished for 14 million euros in the year 2010. It's a great place to take photos. And behind here we have what's called these alcoves or these little benches that represent 48 provinces in Spain. And nowadays there's actually 50 provinces in Spain. And as you can see, it's the Instagram hub of Sevilla. Well, being that I'm a resident of Malaga for like the last year and a half, it's only fair that I show this beautiful ceramic tile here, the Azulejo, as I say in Spanish, of Malaga. And what we have here is a depiction of the conquest of Malaga, meaning that in the year 1487, Doña Isabella, the Catholic queen at the time, she set up camp in the barrio of La Trinidad, the oldest neighborhood in Malaga, contrary to popular belief, actually where I currently live. And from there they seated Muslim occupied Malaga and this is what we have a depiction of this and we have 48 of these provinces here I don't know where the other two are I don't know why they're missing two but this is a really cool display of what we have here now in Sevilla we've got a lot of this horse and buggy use some would argue that this is animal exploitation and you know it's a valid argument it's extremely hot here but on a historical note, while horses were, yes, indeed native to North America, the Spanish and other European nations reintroduced horses in the Americas as part of that Colombian exchange. What were some other animals that came here from Europe? Well, we have pig, we have sheep, and in exchange, we had things like potatoes, tomatoes, cacao. Interestingly enough, sugar and citrus fruits, bananas, etc., were not native to the Americas. Those came here from Europe, from the Middle East. And yeah, part of that massive Colombian exchange that I just find so fascinating because what would the two cultures be like without some of these things that have essentially made those nations? All right, you guys, we're gonna try some healthy tapas. Spinach with garbanzos, wow. Delicious. It tastes like it has some spices um, from Morocco or something, or some Indian spices. I mean, it's almost like an Indian dish. Holy hell, this is good. Solomillo, pork here with ham, Iberian ham and peppers, wow. And some little montaditos, oh my God. Just look at that, you guys, look at that. Wow. You gotta find these places in the historic center of Sevilla. Dime a dozen. This is really good, like, this, are, this reminds me of either something Indian or, or even African. Mediterranean. Yeah, Mediterranean flavor. Mediterranean is full of 
rich culture and trading and uh, history of commerce with spices and different flavors from North Africa, from the Middle East, Western Europe, the Americas. Amek and I here just thought of a good point. You know, we come and eat at these little bar places, right? So it's like essentially bar food. But when you think of bar food in the United States, you think of hamburgers, mozzarella sticks, chicken wings, which don't get me wrong, all those foods are great and delicious. But like bar food here is healthy. You know, we got the pork, we got the ham, we got the garbanzos and spinach. We got uh, squid, squid, mm -hmm. little baby squid. Yeah, with the tentacles. I mean, crikey. Yeah, they call uh, Sevilla the frying pan of Europe. I mean, we could probably crack an egg on this head and fry it right now. You gotta use a lot of sunscreen, eh? Yeah, factor 50 all the way, <laughs> this bad boy. Yeah, in fact, you know, the record high was recorded here in Europe. I think it was somewhere around 48 degrees Celsius some years back. Have you ever experienced 40 plus degrees Celsius? No, no. Except for here. Except in Spain, yeah. Yeah, so that's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you guys. But for the locals, it's part of life, it's normal. That's how life works in Sevilla. Things close down during the day. You stay inside, you stay in the shade. In fact, many people don't even have air conditioning here. They just accept it how it is. And that's how it's been for centuries. Punch him. Yeah, punch me. Just do it. Ugh. Oh, shit. Whoa, he's kind of strong. <laughs> Puni Punito. Punito. Punito, yeah. We're a friend. Punito. You're my friend. You protect me. Al, you're doing something bad? Yes. What do you do? I'll protect you from this evil white man right yeah. here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, our tour of Sevilla is coming to an end. We're going to end here at the famous archives of the Indies. Now, this would be like the Smithsonian, like we have in Washington, D.C., in the United States. And in fact, there's so many archives, so many documents there that it said that if you lined up all the documents, it would be impossible to read over a lifetime. And you could literally have a line of nine kilometers of documents, archives, documenting the exchange between the Americas and that of Europe. So much history has passed through here. And it's actually quite impressive that in the 16th century, King of Spain at the time knew that the documents had to be saved here. Additionally, Christopher Columbus's remains have since been placed in this area in Sevilla after originally being buried in Valladolid, then being sent to the current day Dominican Republic, Havana, Cuba, before being returned to Sevilla. Well, over the centuries, there's been a lot of harsh criticism of what the Spanish did in the Americas. They did bring disease, they did bring slaves. Cuba was built on slavery in the sugarcane fields, the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean nations, the Spanish speaking Caribbean nations, but at the same time, Churches, religion, universities, hospitals, massive cities that represent the architecture, the things that we see here were also brought there. Spanish had to mix with indigenous populations to keep their empire alive. And so today, you'll see a huge racial footprint, Spanish blood mixed with native blood, and those are what it's called mestizos or criollos. And basically, this right here represents all of that history in one place. The city of Sevilla is absolutely astounding. It's a place that I love to come to. And you know, I'll be back to make more videos, more in depth one day. So, I hope you guys liked that video. I'll see you guys from another place. I'm not exactly sure where. Until the next time, Adventure Elliot, PC and out. Hasta luego.